Um, under the rib. Just yeah. that QL. Under QL the under the rib, you can close to the spine and onto the hip, just above the hip as well. So it's that kind of whole region, man. It's that, yeah. that awareness there, that tenderness. Um, so yeah, we'll see see what you can do for me today, Ninja. Just All right, man. since we did a squat. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, Ninja and Leo, we're just gonna jam. We're gonna jam. We're gonna fix this bloke's back, but we're yeah. also gonna have a bit of a chat about lifting and sprinting. Yep. So we've recently had our our lifts and our sprints, so I'm getting that <laughs> obstruction. Um, I wish I had hair like you, man. I'd be yeah, I'd be one different dude, I think. I'd be more like the cousin Barry. <laughs> um, yeah, so I suppose sprinting is something that's not foreign for you. You actually really enjoy it and you put the up pursuing it to try and see how fast you can go sort of in your lifetime. You're Pretty much, man. Right in the midst of it, are you? Yeah, you're I just am. trying to get down that 100 metre time, so. Yeah, just trying to tick off the hundreds of a seconds off every time, man, and trying to get quicker. Yeah. Is the is the goal really? Yeah. Um, and the main goal is to try and get under eleven seconds, which would be, I think, pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to put that as my ahead of myself and see where I can um, sort of end up. That's um, the carrot. That's the carrot, man. You know, yeah. you gotta have something that's dangling in front of you to, to chase. And at the moment, it's it's um, it's um, yeah, it's pushing me for sure. You know, um, ran a pretty good time over the weekend. With, with a bit of a headwind as well, which is always impressive. Also, we actually thought it was going to be a tailwind, and in fact, I was talking to coach, and he was even thinking it might not have even been a an official time because it might have been too much of a tailwind. You know, I think it's when you have a plus three or a plus four, it becomes an unofficial time kind of thing. So, um, yeah, it was quite surprising when he messaged me like two hours later to say that it was actually ran in a negative two point five headwind. So. Um, it means that the time could have been quicker if it was um, you know normal conditions in each. So yeah, um, had a bit of a trip on the starting line as well. Or my, I think my second or third step, I was still trying to wear in my new spikes, man. They're they're a little bit extra cushion, so there's it doesn't allow for the same amount of ground clearance, especially on the first of a few steps um, where you're kind of almost just clearing the ground. You know what I mean? Instead of your top end speed where you're bringing your high knees up the whole time, so little bit of a stumble and so yeah there's definitely a lot more room for improvement although it was a pretty good time as well so I'm, I'm pretty pretty happy with that result um, to get a good fucking run under my belt man yeah last couple of weeks it was on on the back of a heavy lift club so you know I was kind of running dead in a way yeah um, so it's a good way to to finish the year because yeah the next race is a kind of it will be will be in 2023 um, yeah which is yeah crazy to say because the year's just gone so fast man yeah. Um, You've had a big year with us. I have, man. I mean, like, this guy's had the best apprenticeship year ever. Started with the filming of the, our practitioner course. So, yep. so you were kind of like brand new to us. So we kind of filmed everything, your responses, your reaction to all our philosophies, methods, our metaphors, our little activities we get everybody to do when they first um, train with us. We filmed all like 60 hours of training. So, I was brand new to the industry yeah. and, and brand new to the philosophies here as well. And so, um, you know, the cornflower, the alleyway, just I just remember, you know, jumping, diving deep, um, and just adopting the, the MMT philosophy in the MMT way. Um, and it's um, it's yeah, it's just crazy to think how how much of a deep dive it was and what I've learned over the years. And um, it's just yeah, really cool to be in, to, to be in that sort of hindsight now and looking back on it and kind of adopting those values and um, yeah just helping people and changing lives really man so um, and just getting quicker as well and stronger too yeah um, learning the philosophies in the gym and on the uh, in the barefoot springs as well and kind of applying that to my own physical practices it's definitely um, helped me improve or sort of solidify my, my sprinting just getting that those extra reps on a Friday, man, has been really, really good. Yeah. On the grass and um, kind of culminated in um, yeah, a Christmas party a couple of years, a couple of years, a couple of weeks back. Yeah. Um, you know, we kind of slogged it out through the year, and we were able to yeah, just all get in a group and and see how far we could push ourselves, man. Not only on our lifts, but in our sprints as well. So um, 
that's always a really, really good feeling, man. You, you kind of push yourself to the limit or, you know, you don't even know what your limits are actually until you, you kind of approach them and, mm -hmm. and push them and even, you know, once you reach your limit one week, you, you kind of know where you stand. I think it's all about getting to that limit and seeing how, how much further you can, you can push it. Um, and there's kind of growth and, and change there and, and getting stronger as well. So um, that's always one of the things that I enjoy about the lift club is, or the sprints is, um, yeah, man, just seeing how, <laughs> I guess, how much pain you can put yourself through, man. Because like, once you get to those juds or that speed endurance stuff at the end, yeah, you're in a world of hurt, but it's, it's funny. You, you find some strength to, to overcome that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and there's a there's some meaning that you know you kind of there's a I don't know a proudness man you you kind of can pat yourself on the back man when you kind of let it all out there there's there's something really rewarding that I find anyway about just fucking tackling your mental that that little voice in your head that just wants to fucking you know tap out tap out man. Mm -hmm. I think that's sort of one of the, what you're talking about now, we always face these kind of moments, like, especially with that speed endurance sort of stuff, the gut running, like, yeah, you, you get tested and there's physical signs and symptoms, like, and how you respond in these moments, do you fucking push through? Yeah. Or do you back off and yeah, just sort of start walking type of thing or, you know, just, you know, so it's sort of going into these moments and just seeing what your body can do if you, you, you keep on pushing, you know, and how much lactic can you tolerate, and all these kind of things. What, it's, a, it's a real test for the body and the mind. Yeah, I think that, that word tolerate, man, it's mm. like, it's, it, that, that's I think what it's, it really comes down to. It's like, when are you going to pull the pin or are you not going to pull the pin, you know, because it's, it's very real in the mind when you're fucking huffing and puffing and like your legs feel like cement and you just, you're trying to suck in air, but like, your body feels like it's, you know, your body's trying to tell you that it's had enough, you know, but I think it's, yeah, definitely strength, as much as it does strengthen the body, man, when you're fucking running on red line, it's, it's the mind as well, man, you know, yeah. I think if you can overcome, you know, feelings of the language of the body, um, the thoughts of the language of the mind, you know, and if you, if you give into your feelings, you, you kind of, yeah, you can, you can kind of override that, man, and, and push yourself further. It's almost like an illusion sometimes, you know? Yeah. Because once you get to that tolerance level and you can overcome that and still commit and get over the line and, and get through it, as much as your body was saying no, you kind of have this realisation at the end that you can, you're the master of your mind, you know? And as close as you kind of felt like you were to fucking tapping out or that was as much as you could give, you realise that you've got more to give, you know? Yeah. And you can kind of carry that through the next time. Or any, anything else in your life, man, you know, when you feel like you, you're kind of at your limit. Oh, there's more, man. Yeah. There's it's got, more. Yeah, it's like with this, the stuff we talk about, you, you don't know where your limits are until you have an incomplete lift or, a, yep. um, you know, just a total meltdown in the sprints or something like that where you kind of just... You just cannot do any more. You don't. You don't know where your the boundary is until you kind of cross it. You know. So um, that's the stuff we're talking about. Kind of knowing yourself and going there repeatedly and um, experiencing it. And, and that threshold just gets gradually better and better the more you kind of enter that those zones. So you kind of you learn about your mistakes. You know. You say that about life, but you learn about incomplete lifts or things like that. You actually know where your limits are, so it's finding them out. And, and the other thing I want to add in this little conversation is healthy competition. Okay, I think that's what we're really good at creating is healthy competition, like in both the gym and on the track. So um, the encouragement, you know, and just to, you just stand up because you're you're on the stage. You've got to perform. You've got to perform. But, and you don't want to be embarrassed and yeah. things like that. Yeah. But everyone, no matter if you complete the lift or not, you know, when they complete it, fucking, the energy is awesome. But even when you don't and you know it's a really top effort, you didn't fucking pull out of it or whatever, you just ground, ground up as much as you possibly could, there's still a real level of support there and just congratulations on the effort from our team. But yeah, it's setting goals in the gym and sort of trying to win races 
in our sprints, that's what makes you really develop and find the natural pathways, the most efficient pathways, get stronger, more efficient as you continue to um, you know, go into these realms of you know, where your limits are. So you, you get better, don't you? Yeah, you do. And I think just continuing to get into those realms, you know? Yep. It's one thing to do it once or twice, but I think just like anything, to see how far you can sort of push yourself and challenge yourself, if you do it consistently enough, you actually sharpen that tool off of um, pushing yourself or seeing how, how much you can get out of yourself and seeing how strong you actually are. Um, I think that's the important thing as well. It's, it's not just like a one-stop thing. Yeah. You are what you Got really it. do. Yeah. You know what Aristotle like? Yeah, yeah. It's, um, you got to make it habitual, you know. Yeah. Success is hard. It takes consistency, not complexity. So we're, we're kind of um, into doing the bulk of the things, the basics, they give you the most bang for buck, the most results, do that often. Because a, a lot of people can concentrate on the one percenters and just be terrible at the 99 percenters, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. if, you know, diet or, or whatever, these things that you can do every day, you kind of, um, yeah, but if you concentrate on the, the corrective, say, or the, you know, the, uh, I know the sunlight or something like that, these all these things that are one percenters, you know, and you're not doing the, the, the speed work, the acceleration work, the actual yeah. raw strength work. The actual yeah. meat and potatoes or whatever they mm. call it, right? It's, yeah. It's easy to kind of, especially this day and age, man, you've got all these tips and tricks for rehab and specific stretch here or what's the best kind of technique or, you know, the best how do you microdose here or take, do a sauna twice a week or whatever. But, mate, if you're not actually putting the actual work or the act, what it is to actually move or run or, or jump or, or lift, then you, you're essentially just looking for shortcuts ultimately, yeah. right? Those one percenters don't have anywhere near the effect yeah. if you've got a clean vessel or you yeah. know, to, to work with, a cleaner vessel or more conditioned vessel. So. Anyway, so tell us about the gym last uh, two weeks ago when we did our testing. How did you go? Because you, you're coming off a bit of this back thing yeah so you you kind of with a week before that lift you were in no man's land was, you were oh, yeah. man, quite debilitated actually yeah so uh, it was quite bizarre i just kind of felt myself yeah in, in a bit of strife and i got myself right thanks um partly to working at such an amazing or in a great industry and getting a bunch of this body work done over the week um, I was able to, yeah, come good to lift again at least, but I guess I still had a bit of, uh, I don't know, what would you call it, like fear. Mental, mental, yeah, fear uh, behind the recent injury. So when I was kind of approaching my, you know, towards the end of the, the max lift kind of thing, your, your one, one rep attempts, there was, a, yeah, a bit more fear than usual, I guess, going into them. So, um, I got to 170, which is 10 under my PB, and then I thought I'd try for a 190. Whoa. So you skipped the 180? I skipped the 180. I just thought, you know, if I'm going to try for a PB, I may as well try yeah. for a PB. And look, I, I got it up a little bit, definitely below my knees, and my ninja kid told me that it's got to be a grind, but I'm, I'm, I'm yet to kind of tap into that, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, but kind of seeing. You know, it was the first time that I saw it because there was fucking a few grinds that day, man. Mm. So to, to be a bit more exposed to it, even though I wasn't do it, doing it, I was, yeah, I guess getting a bit more used to the fact that that's probably what's required, you know. Sometimes when I look at a grind, it, it, I, I kind of cringe sometimes, you know. It's just like, fuck, can I really be, be doing that? I've kind of lifted with, other, with another philosophy of kind of just keeping it straight back, not really grinding it up. Um, but I think, you know, you can still learn by watching as well, you know, visualization or whatever it is, it was mirror neurons, mirror neurons, you know, yeah. I was kind of being a bit more exposed to it. There was a few people that kind of lifted PBs and the energy in the room was kind of infectious and it kind of makes sense that, you know, this, this is a potential pathway forward in terms of grinding out some of my future PBs. Um, so We'll see. I thought I was on the mend, and I was up until yesterday. 
but it's um, kind of read its head again, so. Yeah, and what did you squat? Squat, I squatted 150, which was what? an equal PB. That is a massive squat. Yeah, yeah. And how much do you weigh, roughly? 75. 75? So that's... So double your body weight yeah, for a squat. Shit, <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah. And Jace, I suppose he's... Oh, man. I think he only weighs about 70. Yeah. <laughs> and he dead 220 and yeah. triple, 155. Triple body weight. Yeah. Double and a bit for squat. He's... And he's phenomenal, you know. Oh, man. Every time... He's a, he's a specimen, man. I, yeah. I was at his lift club yesterday and he was... I think he did five at 180. Like just <laughs> a marathon on one eighty. Jeez, you know. You said it was going to be a cruising lift club as well. That's mm-hmm. why I kind of I was in two minds about doing it because I did a bit of training the day before. But you know, I'm always one to fucking jump into the gym, man. Mm-hmm. Or fucking maybe that's why my back's kind of t- is the way it is because I'm kind of throwing myself at different workouts all the time, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he was up and down five times with the one eighty mm-hmm. with like a textbook kind of lift from Jay. So yeah. it's always good to be in his company and observe the way he does things man because um yeah yeah it's as it's as good as you're gonna get with really, Jace. Yeah. Um so yeah that was the squats then we did what do we do? Lifts, uh, pull ups and, and push ups. I definitely PB my push ups at fifty. That's cool. Which is pretty good for me man. Like I'm more of a lower body dominant kind of athlete. Yeah. So my upper body stuff, especially in the last six months, has kind of taken a bit of a back seat for my sprinting. Um, but I had a commitment this year to get to my fifty and Again, it was um, not that I couldn't have done it without the team, but there's some, definitely something about having that energy in the room that that wills you on further, man. You're less likely to give up, and you're just you're grinding it out. And I think I had Tash coaching me. My ear manager was kind of getting me over the line, so yeah, I got my fifty out, man. Yeah, cool. I hung my hat up on that, which was good. Yeah, yeah. You did pretty well on your list as well, Ninja man. You yeah. said you were going to have a just see how you felt. Yeah. But that, yeah. that energy was infectious, eh? Yeah, it was, man. I, like, I, I, I'm in a different phase. I'm just doing lifting for my health and to keep strength and to keep that social connection and things like that. So I haven't been pushing myself for five years, probably, well, to push into those really heavy realms. So I've just been trying to maintain. And, yeah, I got a 170, and I hadn't, I hadn't done that for nearly a year. So since we did the, the advanced, advanced lift. lifting course... yeah. Uh, online course, so and then I try. I got 130 for a squat, which I haven't done for I don't know, maybe a decade or something. Where does that come so, from, man? So, and I tried 140, which I haven't tried for two decades for 20 years. So, um, and I felt I was feeling so good on day, I, I probably could get it if I trained again to, to do it because I haven't really, um, well, worried really about it. Yeah, yeah. Like one, 110, like I, I didn't usually do. 100 maybe 110 in yeah. general through the year on the lifts on the squats so trying for 140 was way over as what i can generally do generally you know? do but yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe if you do actually put it to the forefront of your mind and yeah. then make it like an actual yeah you know a challenge for a challenge of yourself goal. yeah you kind of get better absolutely what i what i'm kind of thinking with you man like you couldn't dream of a more perfect job for yourself or more, you know what I mean? Because, like, you see love sprinting and gym and, and your body movement, things like that, and learning how to fix people, like, be effective with the hands-on work and and the social aspect and, the, and even performing. Like, you're a good speaker, you know, things like that as well. So you kind yeah. of have that opportunity to be, speak on videos, to demonstrate perform how to do exercise and treatment and philosophy or what, whatever it is that you kind of want to tell the world Absolutely, you know so like, think, yeah it, yeah it definitely does tick a lot of boxes man in yeah. terms of how i kind of carry myself and some of the things that i kind of is is my lifestyle really and um that's why it was yeah it, it is <laughs> Mm. You know, you could argue a dream job, man. I'm able to yeah. express myself in, in the ways that I that I that I do. Yeah. Um, from yeah, you pretty much you, you said it, Ninja man. Like sprinting, lifting, speaking, um, talking about <laughs> <laughs> you know as, as basic as that sounds. But yeah. some of the deep kind of philosophical concepts we go in into here, man, which which not just translate to just sort of hands-on work, but just into you know some some key life concepts as well, man. You know. Um, clarity, consistency, 
all the kind of big things that we, we've talked about, man, they, they don't just, um, you know, revolve around just body work or lifting, man. It's, it's really like a metaphor for, you know, for all the challenges and all the sort of ups and downs we kind of face in life as well, which is, um, you know, a good way to kind of tie it in. Otherwise, it just becomes, um, you know, it, it doesn't really hold much meaning otherwise, man. And, and I think that's the great thing about working here too is that it's, it's um, we can kind of get better individually and, and you know, with a team as well and and just improve ourselves, you know, in, in, in our life's um, capacities as well. Yeah. I think you've hit a pretty key spot there, man. Yeah, I'm on it. Yeah, the QL just under the rib. Yeah. It's really hard for me to pinpoint exactly kind of what's going on and maybe that's part of what I, I'm trying to discern too is just try and, try and understand what it is. Yeah. You know, so I've got something to work on. But sometimes the unknown is, um, you know, we've got to contend with as well. Yeah, in that spot for you. Get that angle. I might move the camera a little bit so we get more close up, and I'm gonna fire a couple of questions at you. Oh man, shoot me. All right, down a little. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So. Okay. Oh, Settle down, mate. <laughs> He's in. He's in. He's in. So, um, where is your favourite part of the body to treat? My favourite part of the body to treat, probably the sacrum and lower back. I've had some low back issues in the past, um, which had me, yeah, pretty down and out for a little bit. So, um, kind of bouncing back from that, I have like a, yeah, a respect for that area of the body that I didn't otherwise have before my injury, um, kind of doing my rehab and getting out of pain again and kind of getting pain free and then being able to sprint and lift properly again and, and kind of being fitter than I ever have. Um, I just understand that area of the body uh, a lot more because obviously I've had that first-hand experience um, and it's kind of the area of the body that eventually, you know, was a catalyst to, to get me into this line of work. Yeah. Um, and also just having, after receiving treatment on that area of the body, the sacrum specifically, um, when I started my practitioner training here, um, was quite profound. Some of the yeah. sensations that I kind of felt just made a lot of sense, you know, and it's been um, amazing to be able to pass on that wisdom as well um, yeah. to kind of enlighten other people and, yeah. and make them kind of realize, oh, that's really good in there. Um, that there's benefit to treating those areas. Yeah. I think specifically that, that, that sacrum especially is one of those areas that probably doesn't really get treated that much. Yeah. There's not a lot of muscle tissue on there. Um, a lot more kind of connected tissue, tendons and ligaments. If you look at an anatomy chart, man, I'm really just trying to spit here, but like ninjas got, got a Steven Seagal pressure point, man. Yeah. It's incapacitating me here a little bit, but Man, if you really look at an anatomy chart, there's so much crisscrossing of tendons and ligaments at that sacral level. And I think it's pretty indicative of the different forces that are being translated through the body at that point. It's kind of our center of gravity. When we think about our movements, like, pause. Yeah. Like running, walking, uh, twisting. A lot of those kind of diagonal forces are kind of translated from our lower limbs into our upper body thinking about golf, baseball swings, all of that sort of stuff. Um, so there's more opportunity, I guess, for for cleaning there, man, if, if we've got, got all these sort of force vectors kind of coming in. Um, and the fact that there's a lot more connective tissue there too. Um, a lot of our philosophy obviously revolves around cleaning out that connective tissue, resetting it, yep. um, aligning the, the fascia. Um, oh, shit. So if there's more fascia in that area, definitely more opportunity for cleaning, I guess that's the way I kind of look at it. Yeah. Um, so important spot to get treated, man. I think yeah. in terms of like comprehensive lower back treatment. Yeah. Or anything regarding the hips. Um, yeah. Yeah. Have a look at treating that sacrum, man. So. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that that'll be my favorite part. Yeah. Of the body to treat, I think. Yeah. Right. Job, yeah. I'll give you one more yeah. question. Yeah. Um. So, if you could try and summarize MMT, Melbourne Muscular Therapy, is what. What are we about? What's our, how would you kind of sum us up? How would you describe us? Um, 
how would I describe what in a sentence, man? I feel like Yeah, or like a thirty second yeah, or a minute yeah. or something like that, what's all key words. Yeah, which man. I don't know. Um a lot of fun, man, first and foremost. Uh, a lot of fun. It, the culture, really enjoyable, man. Like um, this freedom of expression, freedom of um, yeah, to kind of do to implement our lifestyle attitudes into our treatment philosophy. I think is is, is the main thing, you know. Um, and just like being able to to help people. Our body work is literally, I reckon, world class, man. Yeah. Um, we we definitely be up there in terms of the best sort of yeah massage therapists. In the world, and I know I've only had industry experience here, so maybe I'm speaking for a bit more bias. But purely speaking on the results that you know I'm able to deliver, um, and the, the the people that we have been able to help out worldwide, um, the way we treat here is, is literally is, is at a world class level. Um, yeah, we just it's a holistic um, a holistic place, uh, holistic health and well being. Uh, we. It's not just about physical symptoms, man. It's like, how are those physical symptoms being addressed or, you know, how, why are they presenting the way they are, you know? Um, I think we, it's not just a one, um, a one sort of way approach to, um, to fixing or to, yeah, thinking about resolving symptoms in the body. So, um, we, we kind of look at it from different aspects and I think it's, um, it's important to do that because everyone kind of presents differently as well and, and they react differently to, to different things. So, um, yeah, a fun a fun um, work environment and world-class treatment. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, man. So, thanks for being part of the team. So, I think that's probably a, a good word for us as well, like team, isn't it? Like, we're just very cohesive and yep. diverse, but yeah, we're just really accepting and... We do it like no other. So yeah, that um, authenticity kind of thing as well, I think is a really strong thing with us. We kind of don't worry too much about the outside world kind of taunting us or anything like that or yeah. giving us shit. So we kind of just do our own thing, stay in our lane. And, but yeah, we're just really exploring our own concepts. And, and we've got the people that are really attracted to us find us and um, resonate, you know, and they benefit because they, they're in the place they need to be to, to you know, go navigate through their stuff. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a really good place. We love it's it. Great we, place yeah, man, yeah, we love it. It's just a great community and yeah. Come check it out, man. Try to get it fixed. Yeah. We're the ones. We're the ones. We're the ones. So yeah, I'm gonna pull out, yeah. So yeah. So thanks for that interview, mate. We got to know nice. you a bit better and, and um, your philosophy on lifting and, and things like that as well. So, yep. and um, training. So, yeah, it's a big part of um, being human, isn't it? Moving your body. Moving your body, man. Feeling it's, healthy. It's, yeah, it's, it's important. You've got to move it, man. Don't get stuck. Yeah. Um, don't calcify, man. Like, yeah. you know, the, the joints and the uh, need motion to um, be healthy and to kind of, yeah, get lubrication in there, get blood flow in there, um, to stay resilient. Um, yeah, just move as much as you can, especially in this day and age, man. If you're living in like a Western society and you do a lot of sitting for your work and you might sit in front of a TV and maybe some of our lifestyle habits, man, and just kind of get you down and slow and, and kind of stuck, um, you got to unstick yourself, man. The body will just become stuck if you don't move. So um, movement is medicine. Yeah. Um, so keep moving, man. Um, and if you're stuck, come check us out. Yeah, and we get some work done. Yeah, clean Enjoy first, build moving. second. Clean yeah. first, build second, man. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, come enjoy a bit of philosophy here at MMT, man. We'll get you right. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Give us a done. Get after it! <laughs> done! <laughs> done! I was trying to pass it off to you, man. <laughs>